Hi, I'm so glad that you came by my way today. I want to talk to you about a story that may touch your heart. It comes from a book that I wrote some time ago entitled Back Home Again. I grew up in a little town in West Virginia situated along the Ohio River. And it was a small town and we lived about three miles from a little town called St. Mary's, West Virginia. But during those years, I made a lot of memories, and I want to share one of those today. It's entitled, from the book, Laughing at Defiance. Hope you enjoy it. We were at our sister's house, and uh, my mother and dad, all of us was seated, were seated in a coop, and this was way back when I was only, oh, probably 13 or 14, maybe a little bit older. Let me share the story. I've entitled it, Laughing at Defiance. Rod, you're going to back into that ditch, she yelled. Rod, you're going to back into that ditch. Those words with that their exclamatory inflections and dire warnings of doom are impaled upon my memory banks. Over the years, the story of that evening has been shared with friends and family many times. And flashing back to the years when the back seat of the old car was my assigned perch, my family and I had just ended our visit with my older sister, Jeannie. And as memory reminds me, it was wintertime. You know, snow, ice, mud, and freezing temperatures. All the Pickens offspring, a whole car load, had piled into Dad's car. I describe it as four wheels that doubled as his work truck, complete with smudges of grease, clods of red mud, smells of oil, and the audio of chuck hole rattles. As always, it was a tight squeeze to get all of us into family sedan. Clutch in, emergency brake pull, key on, gas pedal touched, starter button pushed, and with nary any hesitation, the eight cylinders of that mechanical beast of burden began their power producing task. Then Dad shifted the gears into reverse turned his head the best he could, and the car began a slow roll down the inclining driveway. And now Dad had a few problems turning his head. In his earlier years, he battled polio. The permanent inflictions left on his body made it painful and probably quite impossible to turn his head more than about 35 degrees or so. And although backing a car had not been a problem for him or his wife or mother, she was more than a bit uneasy about him backing down that slippery incline. In her despair, words seemed to jump out of her mouth. Rod, you're going to back into that ditch. And the words came again and again. And each time they came forth with more excitement and stress and warnings. Well, Dad wasn't ignoring Mother, but he still kept backing. He was having fun. Rolling backwards, the car appeared to pick up, pick up a bit of speed. Now it was halfway down the driveway. All of us in the back seat were picked by the event now in the making. We had some way somehow turned around and were peering out the windows to catch the sense of the impending doom. Dad kept on backing. Then came the final shout of, Rod, you're going to back into that ditch. And as in response, there was a thud with a company jarring that let us know Dad had succeeded in fulfilling Mother's prophecy. In frustration, Mother exclaimed, Rod, why do you defy me so? And with that, she pushed the door open and started back up the icy driveway, leaving all of us chuckling 
as dad's act of defiance. So I say to my memory, thanks, Mother and Dan, for creating a memory that has brought, a, a brought about many smiles, many chuckles, and laughs. It was another good reason for me to visit back home again. On the other hand, I, I want to talk a little bit about defiance. A child who is, a, who is defiant regarding his parents, or an adult who is defiant against one another, or especially authority, is in violation of the Word of God. I have a note here that the Lord does not look at things the way a man looks at them. And while a man looks at the outward appearance, and boy, we kids did, because it was a funny thing to us in our immaturity. But the Lord looks at the heart. You see, appearances can fool us. And here's just a reference in the Bible, 1 Samuel 16, 7. But always evaluate a person by their character and the principles on which they base their life, not just on appearances. You see, changing principles equals flexible character. And so I go back to the Word of God and I think about King David of the Jewish people. He had a son by the name of Solomon. And Solomon was his favor. But as David was taken out of this life, Solomon became very defiant against everything that his dad taught him. Something for you and me to learn. If we're proud of our defiance and we're mature believers in Jesus Christ, don't be defiant towards authority and don't be defiant towards your parents. Thank you for joining me today and one of my memories from back home again. Hope you come back and see another story from back home again.